Well, we're back for another episode on the development of my 6SQ7 EL34 amplifier. And since the last episode, I've got all the parts on order, on their way to build two amplifiers. And I've got a spreadsheet, which I'm going to put up here, that's showing you the bomb for this build. And I feel really confident about putting this up because I've been listening to this amplifier for over a year, done all the tweaks that I'm going to ever do on it, so I know these are the parts that need to go in it to make it sound good. The first one I'm going to build is going to be identical to the one that I am currently using that's my own. The only difference is going to be that I'm going to move the RCA jacks to the back in a more traditional place, move the speaker jacks over a little bit, and then I'm going to move the power switch from here in the front to one in the back corner here that's just a simple SPDT or SPST uh, toggle switch back in this back corner to simplify the wiring, save a little money, and uh, open up some room in the front for mounting the choke sideways so there's room to put the bottom cover on it. Maybe end up moving these two driver tubes more towards the middle to make some room for the Alps volume pot is a little larger than this audio note one I have and I may need to move these tubes you know together a little bit here which I still think will look fine and the these don't put off enough heat to really be an issue for them being fairly close together and I think it might even kind of help the symmetry to have these kind of to this you know kind of like this together so not too worried about that but I am and going to put the uh, bomb back up as you can see the full price of the parts with all the shipping from the various vendors that I had to get it from came out to $711 which is a little more than I was hoping one of the problems is this 290 DAX transformer that I spec'd is kind of hard to find. There's not a lot of people that stock that amplifier and as such the place that I was able to get it through charges a little more shipping than I would like to pay but that's they were able to, to get it for me. So I'm looking at going with instead of this lay down type transformer getting the more traditional kind that stand it up with the laminations or going you know it looks more like one of these deals where the bells on each side and it's just bolted down on one end with the laminations perpendicular to the uh, chassis instead of being parallel to it like like this one is the one that is this style doesn't have these copper uh, shield that goes across the laminations that's then connected to the chassis ground which helps um, keep it from getting coupled to the output transformers via the inductance but I think that if I can mount it in this direction this is like 90 degrees to the output transformer I don't think it's going to be any problem it saves about $40 and in addition to that, it's easily available. Mauser had like five of them in stock. And the shipping was going to come out to be in about $20 cheaper than where I had to, what I had to pay to get this 290DAX. And so that's $60 that I can save. And the amps got very close to the same specs. It's um, instead of being 355, 0, 355, it's 350, 0, 350. So it's 10 volts less. It's about 30 milliamps less. But this is really oversized for this amplifier already. And so 200 milliamps is still plenty. I mean, it's still overkill for what we're the current we're going to be drawing here. And so 
I'm not concerned about that at all. Um, I do want to see what it looks like and make sure that it doesn't destroy the, the aesthetics of the amplifier, but I don't think it will. The other thing that I want to try, and I'm going to show you the two different power supply schematics that I'm considering using. Here's the first one, and this is the one that is in my current amplifier, and it uses two chokes and three capacitors. It's got a, a 5 Henry choke with a 22 UF cap, and then a 47 UF cap after it, then another 2 Henry choke with a 100 UF cap, and then that goes to the B+. And what I'm thinking about trying in as a cost savings measure is to go with this next schematic where we just use the one choke on the top side. We have a 22 UF, then the 5 Henry choke, and then we're going to use a 270 UF cap after the choke and get our B plus off that. And I simmed both of these, and let me show you what these sims look like. The first sim I'm going to show you is the two choke, and this is using PSUD2 software. So looking at this sim, you can see that the ripple on the B plus is three digits out. It only changes... 0 0.002 volts from straight DC, which is absolutely nothing. And one of the things that I've done in the amplifiers that I've built for myself is I had no interest in chasing DC hum. And I know that in an SE amplifier, that's something that can sneak into the amp very easily and sometimes it's almost impossible to chase down where it's coming from. So I wanted to ensure that my B plus was just as clean as possible. And that's why I've been building most of my amps with this two choke, three capacitor power supply. And as you can see, we're it's simming out at 409 volts with the load that we're going to be putting on this amplifier. Well, on the, the next sim, which is for the one choke system with the transformer that's putting out a total of 10 volts less, and having only one choke, we have less of a voltage drop than we would with the other design, and we come out with exactly the same 409 volts on the B+. And if we look at the ripple on this setup, with the larger 270 UF cap, same 22 UF film cap right after the rectifier, we've still got down to two digit ripple. It's 0 0.04 volts of ripple. So we're down to the hundredths instead of the thousandths. I haven't built one with a power supply like this, but I believe that a lot of people do. And so I'm pretty confident that we can probably get away with leaving off the choke inside the power supply, which is going to save us some more money. So hopefully we can get the cost down closer to $600. Because if we save $20 on the shipping, we save $40 on the cost of the transformer. Then we save $25 on, basically $25 on eliminating the one choke that's on the inside. And then we eliminate one of the capacitors that's a little over $5, but the 270 cap that we're going to be replacing it with is about a dollar more so we save about four dollars there but that adds up to a pretty substantial savings if we say five twenty five thirty seventy that's ninety dollars that we can save on the cost of the amplifier 
in the power supply that likely won't be able to be heard. But we're not going to assume that. Like I said, that's not what we do on this channel. I'm not going to just send this thing and decide, oh, this isn't, you know, that's not going to make any difference. We're going to build one of each and then listen to them. And I'm probably going to listen to them for several days because I want to burn them in anyway. And then see if I can hear any difference between the two of them or if there is any hum that's introduced from using the different transformer with one less choke and the power supply set up different. Hopefully there won't be because that'll then get the parts total down to close to $600, which I think makes this a viable product. The other part that this will help is that the stand-up transformer is easier to fabricate the chassis. With these lay-down types like this, you have to not only drill the holes that mount it, you have to saw out a square opening for the transformer because it sits down inside. One of the bells is inside the amplifier. Let me see if I can... You can see here the bell sticks through the top of the chassis and it also takes up a lot of room inside the amplifier here that makes it difficult to wire the power supply. And if I go with a transformer that all of it's on top, all I have to do is drill the hole, the mounting holes, the two holes for the wires to go through, and it makes the fabrication of the top of the chassis a lot easier. I'm also going to be using different capacitors than I use on my personal build that I think is going to make the inside wiring a lot cleaner. And I'm hoping I can eliminate these screws that you see on the top of the, the top deck of the amplifier, which will make it look a lot nicer. The, the versions that I'm going to be selling, they're not going to have the switch here, so this will just be blank, which I still think will look really nice. The other thing that I've thought about that I really don't think I want to do is I could save about $40 eliminating these cool little gold trim rings that go around the tubes and you know hide all the hardware that holds the tube sockets in. But I don't really want to do that because I feel like it really makes the amp look so much nicer and really gives it kind of a signature aesthetic to what my designs are going to look like. It matches my little logo plate and the volume knob matches it and it just, I don't know, it kind of sets the amp apart. And I'm not sure that's worth saving $40 for. Now if you were going to build this yourself, you can choose to not do that and then you won't have to buy one of these little skunky designs um, logo plates if you're doing this yourself and between the changes to the transformers and eliminating some of this little aesthetic frou-frou stuff that I've put on mine you could save you could get the cost of this amp down to 550 bucks or so which and that's including the tubes and everything that's out the door for the for the parts um, obviously if I was going to build this as a to-go amp, I would need to factor in my labor. And that's the other thing that I'm going to try to keep track of while I'm building this is how long does it take me to actually build one of these? And, and to see what the difference is in the labor time between the two different versions. I have a feeling that it's going to be a lot quicker to build the one with the cheaper transformer that stands up. And if it sounds identical, there's no reason not to go with that version. If I was going to sell this as a kit and customers wanted the chassis all fabricated and all the metalwork done, of course, that's going to take some time, would add to the cost. Plus, I'd have to you know, collect the parts with all the shipping, box it all up. So that's going to add some cost to it. Obviously, the cheapest way of doing this will be for you to do the whole thing yourself and take advantage of me publishing the bomb schematics and the videos on how to build this thing and just do it all yourself. And then there's no middle person. Because if I'm going to be doing this for, for you and to make this easier for you, 
I'm going to need to get paid a little something for my time to make it worth my while. So I think we're in a good place now about figuring out how to make this thing a viable product and also which one of these two power supplies is the better of the two. If there's no difference, obviously the less expensive one would be the way that we're going to recommend going with. So I still wouldn't start building this yet until I get the two prototypes done and give me some time to listen to both of them before give a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the, the cheaper power supply. So I hope you're enjoying watching this series and this amplifier product, whatever you want to call it, as it develops. If you are enjoying it, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, and I'll see you next time on the next round of 6SQ7 Magic. Have a great day.